Hey guys, this is my F31 uh, 1D um, out here in San Francisco Bay. Um, and yes, it's a sea foiling one, which is super fun, but that's a different video. Um, and for a, over a year now, I've been running exclusively of this little electric thing hanging out the back. And um, as I bought this, I couldn't find any like really videos or anything or reviews that weren't like sponsored by anybody or anybody getting free stuff. Um, so I unfortunately are not sponsored, not gonna ask you for Patreon either. Um, I have a job and I pay retail. And um, I did the crazy thing and spent a ton of money and got myself an electric outboard. Um, I got a Tokido Cruise 4 equivalent to about eight horsepower. And I'm just gonna share with you how one year in salt water went. Um, this video is not about pros and cons of electric outboards, um, none of that. There's plenty of information out there. Um, in a nutshell, if you can't envision yourself driving an electric car, you probably can't envision yourself using an electric outboard. For me, I just used this outboard to get in and out of the marina, down the channel, and I'm out the sea, set sail, turn it off and go sail. If you are, you know, basically a motor boater that owns a sailboat, but you actually pretty much motor 24-7, this might not be a solution for you, but for me it's great. Um, to give you an idea, I use about 5 to 7% um, battery setting, you know, going out of the marina and, and setting sail. So um, I don't keep a charger on board. I'll bring one with me um, when the battery reaches about 30%. So, but more on that later. Um, so, yeah, what's to say? Um, when you unpack these, you'll be shocked because this is all plastic and it feels super light and it feels, mm, dare I say, a little cheap. But, um, the advantage of it it is a lightweight motor and on a performance boat like this having no weight on the transom is super helpful so this thing only weighs 44 pounds which is nothing um, super super awesome um, as far as how did it hold up well you can see the other day I lost my little magnetic um, kill switch which turns out doesn't float so if you have or consider getting one of these motors do make sure you get yourself uh, just some basic magnets and carry them with you if your kill switch falls overboard you can use any magnet to to um you know to run your to run your motor um let me show you something this little teeny tiny plug is your communication and it's really tiny so if you don't like taking care of things and if you're not the careful type this is not the motor for you like and the e-propulsion which is the competitor to Tokido they are not that much better so again really really tiny be careful um, I actually removed the entire tiller assembly every time I leave I do this I just pull this pin and by the way I added a bungee cord um, so this pin doesn't fall into the water um, right you gotta just look after yourself and the tiller comes right off um, and stores nicely and neatly away so that's something I would think if you don't do that, the longevity of your torpedo is probably greatly decreased. Um, another thing too, this like display here, which shows you if you use torpedo batteries, it shows you how much you know charge remaining. It shows you how many nautical miles you have left. It shows you your speed and all of this. Um, if you leave this baking in the sun, or if you live in the Caribbean. I'm not sure how well this would do here in San Francisco, even though we have sunshine, but you know, it's fine. Um, another thing I do is I throw um, a cover over the motor if I don't um, use it. You would think if you spend thousands of dollars, right, on an electric motor comes with a cover, it doesn't. Um, and actually Tokido doesn't even offer a cover. So I'm not sure this is not in their best interest, I would say. So anyways, I keep it covered. Um, I put WD-40 um, every so often in, in here in the little connector. I also built a little um, splash guard down here, which is normally open. And, um, you know, water can really go in there. As far as the quality um, of, the, of the stainless parts are concerned, there's actually no concerns. There is no corrosion whatsoever. Yes, I have fresh water rinse um, every time I'm done. But, um, yeah, holds up great. And also this black um, here, this is actually painted, it's, it's metal as well, it protects your, your plastic housing rather well. So um, all in all, um, it doesn't show really too much wear and tear um, after a year of usage, which I must say, I would have not thought so. 
so I added this um, wiring protection when I lowered this engine into the water. And, um, and again, I bought a little aftermarket bracket on Amazon that gives me, you know, a foot up and a foot down. Um, I also added um, bungees here so that these latch in um, by themselves, which is super helpful. Anyways, let's um, lower it in. You can see the bracket actually goes a foot down, which a lot of brackets just bring your motor up and then bring them to like neutral. But this bracket is cool, actually goes a foot up and a foot down. Um, so that's super helpful. And you can see the wires, yeah, they lay on the rack here. They rub, so hence the plastic. Um, the routing then, um, this plug here comes from Tokido to disconnect the power cable. Um, and it just then goes through here and then goes below deck through a waterproof um, connector. Again, all of this has been holding up well. Um, I do, you know, again, a little bit WD-40, a little bit of care, um, a little bit of maintenance, and, and this all, this all shockingly works. Um, so uh, one thing I need to share is as I first um, purchased the engine and I got it um, just actually through my local West Marine dealer. I'm not a West Marine fan by any means, but um, they have this loyalty program, whatever, you get like points for it. And so if you spend so much money, like batteries, motors, na na na, um, you get a lot of points and these points you can redeem against purchases. So I actually ended up with a free VHF AIS radio of the points I earned buying this outboard. And Takeda doesn't give you deals so if you buy from them directly, there's never, they're never on sale. So anyway, that's just, you know, a, a tip to, to kind of save you a dollar. Um, Another modification is this tiller. Actually, if I stand up and drive my boat, this, this tiller, they come with like a long, you can buy like a longer tiller extension. It wasn't actually long enough. So what I did, I just um, put two of them together. I'm not sure if this is visible, but basically I joined two tiller extensions. I sleeved them together uh, to, to make it long enough. And that um, works very well for me. As far as everyday use goes, what's nice is you don't have to worry about warming up your engine. You know, there's obviously no smells, no dirty fingers, um, and such and such. Um, but what's really, what I like the most is that you have essentially an instant forward reverse, right? So you can run it. I'm gonna just throttle it up to show you. It really gives you like a noise idea, right? It has some juice, I'll get that. Actually, the boat is moving off the dock here, even though I'm tied on. Uh, anyway, so you have instant forward reverse, right? No gears, no, no, whatever, right? You can instant forward reverse, and you have instant torque. Um, that's that's nice. Okay, um, we're gonna go for a quick drive. Um, we're moving down the um, marina channel at about two knots, and we have a light headwind. Um, you can see we're drawing like a hundred. Um, watts shows you the boat speed two knots and we have 120 nautical miles left with um our current charge state so um yeah now obviously going two knots is not representative the wind will pick up once we get around the corner and we get real numbers okay we're underwater um the sail flow meter right next to us um says nine to ten knots of wind as you can see we just have some white caps forming um our boat speed is four and a half knots um engine back here is drawing about 850 watts right now at a four and a half knots at a 10 knot headwind uh, that gives us a range of about 20 nautical miles that's plenty I mean we can motor you know through any marina safely within the bay um, no no problems there and um, if we throttle it up we can get it to seven knots. And again, my boat weighs uh, 3,500 pounds and we have quite a little bit of windage here uh, being a trimaran. Okay, same wind, um, still nine to 10, um, but now going with the wind and um, consumption is down to 150 watts um, compared to the um, 900 we saw before. And uh, that puts us at a range of 104 uh, nautical miles. Now I get it, this is like ideal conditions, but just to show what it means going against the wind, you know, almost a thousand watts and it's turning around, going with it drops down to a hundred. So anyways, just in case somebody you know, cares. <laughs> For those, you know, weekenders or cruisers um, or those that motor a lot, um, 
e-propulsion offers um, a unit that does, does regenerative charging, meaning you just let the propeller uh, spin in the water while you sail and it will charge your batteries, which from a technology perspective, that's awesome, right? But um, this being the rocket ship that it is, and this being, again, San Francisco Bay, where no day, I don't know, I mean, what's the slowest we go? 16 knots would be probably a slow day. Uh, even at just, quote unquote, just doing 16 knots, you do not want to have anything drag in the water. Like, trust me, this is not what you want. So, um, but heads off to um, e-propulsion for doing that reach and charging. If you are slower, if you're a cruiser, that's an option. Um, you can also, of course, um, have a solar panel um, on board and charge your batteries. But again, this being, this being a racer here, um, no, you won't find any solar panels here. <laughs> so, anyways, but just want to make sure you know this is an option. All right, let's go down below and I'll show you the batteries, where it is it, and how it's wired, and so on. Um, so, welcome down below. Um, I'm going to remove this uh, stair real quick uh, so we can look in there better. And I'm going to grab a flashlight as well. Okay, so here are my batteries um, right below the stairs. Obviously, I tried to get them as far forward um, as possible. Um, one of the reasons why I went with Torquedo versus E-Propulsion is the batteries are lighter for that um, kind of size engine. I built this little splash guard plastic cover where I'm actually going to keep my... Um, my glass panels for, for my hatch up here, um, they go on here and the bungees prevent them from flying around. Um, so that's the cover. Lifting the cover, you can see I built a frame so they don't slide around. Um, these batteries are waterproof, so you don't have to worry about that part. Um, yeah, and they're, they look beefy, but they're actually shockingly light. So I had um, a 10 horsepower gasoline engine um, and I replaced that. Um, with that and so anyways I, I took a scale and it ended up the electric system is 25 pounds heavier than a gasoline system with half a tank of gas AGM starter battery and so on so 25 pounds that's you know I can live with that my boat is three and a half thousand some pounds and this is San Francisco Bay we have no shortage of wind so if you can show me the difference of 25 pounds on a three and a half thousand pound boat in San Francisco Bay like Text me, I'll take you out, and you, you show me where we can save, where we can feel 25 pounds. Anyhow, um, so yeah, that's, that's how they look. Um, what I did, because I keep this cover on, and um, to charging it, I basically added these little, little charge wires, a little plug. So all I have to do is, is plug in my charger um, right here. Again, this is not Tokido, this is me who added this afterwards to make charging really simple and so I don't have to remove the cover and I don't have to screw anything on. Another thing I did, I installed a Victron um, 48 volt to 12 volt converter. So I am using these as my house batteries as well, right? I mean, obviously no need to carry um, another battery. So up here sits my Victron. Another addition that I did, I wanted to know the battery voltage um, of each battery. And so I just got two voltmeters um, and permanently hook them up. Um, reason why the little digital display on the tiller does actually not, sh it only shows you total voltage, um, but it doesn't show you the individual voltage. And especially when charging your battery, it's just super nice to know like, right, if they charge both equally. Um, another thing I did like right here, I turn on the Victron on and off and um, I bought a manual Torquedo on switch. That's just as a backup um, in case of an emergency. I never used it, so that was a waste of $100 or whatever that was. Um, anyways, yeah, the Victron then feeds my my um, my panel here. And um, I also installed an amp meter um, up here. I'm sorry about the sunlight here. Um, so right now we're drawing 0 0.3 amps because we're just running probably depth and, and that's it. Um, so why am I showing you this is not to show off. I'm just showing you that if you go down the electric route, um, the system works out of the box. It's super easy to wire up. But I'm going to say if you're really against wires and you don't like wires and so on and so on, probably, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> it would be like a maybe, right? But if if you like wires, if, if this is like interesting, if you don't mind, you know, maybe adding things like extra volt panel and adding a little converter then 
this can work really nicely for you. And again, so I'm gonna say, you know, if if you like if you like electrons, you're gonna love this stuff. If you're you know if you're a piston head, then dude, stick with your stick with it. And for sure, it's a lot cheaper. The whole electric setup is about four times as expensive as a comparable um, gasoline setup. So, anyways, I hope this helped. Um, questions, anything, leave them in the comments. And um, yeah, maybe we'll do another day a tour of the boat here. Um, like I said, this is an F31 1D um, with sea foils. She's set up for single handed sailing in San Francisco Bay, which is, um, you know, challenging, but it's super fun. And this is, this boat is, it's a rocket. So, anyways, thanks for watching.